Hey, you, Danny Kay. I've been waiting for you. Oh, I was afraid you'd be here. The average radio listener, huh? What do you hear from the moon? Well, uh, you're right on the beam tonight. Mm-hmm. Where you been keeping yourself the last few days, chum? Oh, I've been in bed with a terrible haircut. I, uh... <laughs> I suppose you're here to complain about last week's program, huh? Well, let me tell you right here and now, that show had zip and ginger. Should have had rum and abner. <laughs> Always criticize, Nancy, you know. You know, if you ever said my show was good, I'd retire. In that case, let me congratulate you on last week's program. <laughs> well, look, my friend, I can take honest criticism, but you're always exaggerating. Well, I'm only human. There you go, exaggerating again. <laughs> well, I've never been so insulted in all my life. Oh, you must have been. <laughs> Carrie, there was something I was going to ask you. It slipped my mind. What was it now? Oh, some insult, I guess. Why don't you quit? That's what it is. That's what I was going to ask you. That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> now, wait a minute, chum. There was something I bring along to show you. What was it now? Oh, yes, my wife. Oh, you brought your wife. Well, where is she? Hey, Mary Margaret. Yeah, what is it? Mary Margaret, this is Mr. K. Mr. K, this is Mary Margaret, my bride. How do you do? <laughs> Mr. K, I heard all about you. Uh, what's your side of the story? It's going to have trouble with you, too, huh? Listen, Kay, after last week's show, they announced you'd be your own guest star on tonight's program. Yeah? Well, when we heard that, my husband and me got into a big fight. You did? Yeah. I said you couldn't do it, and he said you couldn't do it. Neither. <laughs> well, in that case, what was the fight about? We also happened to hate each other. <laughs> well, it's a... Uh... Nothing I can do about that, but I do know that I can be my own guest star because I happen to have right here in my back pocket a split personality. Yeah. <laughs> well, whoever you split it with got the best of that bargain. Uh, well, yeah, well, come in and watch the broadcast. I'll show you. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dick Joy introducing the Danny Kay Show with Butterfly McQueen, Dave Terry and his orchestra, and our special guest this evening, Mr. Danny Kay. And here's the star of our show... Danny Kay! And now, here is our guest star. That popular singing, dancing comedian of the silver screen, direct from California. Greetings from Hollywood. Mr. Danny Kaye! Hey, Dick. Dick, did you notice that Mr. Danny Kaye got more applause than Danny Kaye? Well, it serves you right for getting yourself as a guest star. Well, take it easy. This is going to be tough enough being my own guest star. I'm playing all parts myself. Well, if it's so tough, why are you doing it? Well, I was forced into it. Just couldn't get anybody else. I thought of getting Gregory Rathoff. He was in town last week, you know. So I walked over to his hotel, talked to him about it, and on the way I got to thinking, suppose he asked me what he'll do on the program, and I said to myself, well, we'll, we'll do a sketch about Russia. And I knew he'd say, Danny, my boy, a sketch about Russia is right down my alley. In Russia, I was a great dramatic actor. I acted before the Tsars. I still have the Tsars to prove it. <laughs> I like very much that joke. It's really nice. And then I said to myself, I'm going to have trouble with this guy because I don't want to do dramatic stuff. I want to do comedy. But if I told him that, I knew he'd say, Comedy? <laughs> right off my alley, my boy. Of course, I will get all the laughs. But why should I have him? Uh, 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 let, 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 let him have all the laughs, huh? <laughs> I'm the comedian on this program. Well, I knew what he'd say to that. You a comedian? <laughs> you make me laugh. Yeah, well, that's more than you do to me. Danny, my boy, when it comes to comedy, you must take your hat off to rattle. <laughs> well, now, Dick, I wasn't going to take that from anybody. So I made up my mind to say to him, who are you that you're funnier than I am? Who'd you have to be? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Very funny. Of course.
course, it is very funny, Danny, my boy. When I was at the Moscow Art Ballet, I got plenty of laughs. Ballet laughs. <laughs> and I will get all the laughs on your radio program. Yeah? Da. Yeah? Da. Yeah? Da. Yeah, da. Yeah, da. Yeah, da. Yeah, da. Oh, Danny, wait a minute. Don't get so excited. What happened when you finally got to Radoff's apartment? Got to his apartment? Do you think I'd go to see a guy after all those terrible things I figured he'd say to me? <laughs> now, I don't have to go to his house to be insulted. <clears throat> of course not, Danny. I will be very happy to come to see you. Quiet, Radoff. But you see, Dick, I just couldn't get a guest star, and I finally decided my guest star would be Kay. Oh, uh, Sammy or Kaiser? Kay France. No! Mr. Danny Kay of Hollywood, the movie actor. Well, how'd you happen to get him? Mm, I was beside myself, so I got him. <laughs> well, what's our guest star going to do on the program, Danny? Well, I don't know. Look at that Hollywood hand. Look at him. Posing with that strawberry blonde hair. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better introduce him now. And it's about time. I came in here as a young man, and I'm about to go on in a character part. Well, look who's here, Mr. Danny Kaye. You were expecting maybe Mrs. Nussbaum. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Kaye. You don't understand. You see, in radio, when we introduce the guest star... We have to act very surprised. It gives that program that touch of informality, that joie de vie, that je ne sais quoi, that chicory chick chala chala. <laughs> see? Yes, I see. That was quite dismal. <laughs> yes. Now what do we do, Dick? Uh, interview him, Danny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, they always ask the guest stars a lot of questions. They give them very funny answers. Well, this will be good. Get ready for some big laughs, Dick. Uh, well, Mr. K, are you enjoying your stay in New York? Yes. <laughs> hmm. Uh, going all the nightclubs, I suppose? Yes. <laughs> Seeing all the shows in town? Yes. <laughs> Serves me right for getting a dope for a guest star. <laughs> I give up. Ah, uh, there you go, K. Me and Mary Margaret told you you couldn't split your personality. Yeah, there just ain't enough to go around. Now, you two keep quiet. I'll show you. My guest star and I are going to sing a duet. The Babbitt and the Bromide. Right, Mr. Babbitt? Absolutely, Mr. Bromide. <laughs> Mr. Smith met a Mr. Jones on the avenue one day and held a conversation in their own peculiar way. They both were solid citizens. They both had been around. And as they spoke, you clearly saw their feet were on the ground. Hello? How are you? How's folks? What's new? I'm great. What's good? Ha-ha! Not wood! Well, well! What's he? How you been? Nice day. How's tricks? What's new? That's fine. How are you? Nice weather we are having, but it gives me such a pain. I have taken my umbrella, so of course it doesn't rain. Hi-ho. That's right. What's new? How's the wife? Got to run. Oh, my. Ta-ta. Oh, no. Goodbye. Ten years went quickly by for both these substantial men, and then it happened that one day they chanced to meet again. <laughs> They had both developed in ten years. There was no doubt. And so, of course, they had an awful lot to talk about. Hello? How are you? How's the folks? What's new? I'm great. That's good. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. Not well. Well, well. What's he? How you been? How's he? How's tricks? What's new? That's fine. How are you? I'm sure I know your face, but I just can't recall your name. Well, how have you been, old boy? You're looking just about the same, I hope. That's right. What's new? How's the wife? Got to run. Oh, my. Ta-ta. I don't know. Goodbye. Before they met again, some 20 years they had to wait. This time it happened up above inside St. Peter's Gate. <laughs> A half one was carrying and both were wearing wings. And this is what they said as they were strumming on the string. <laughs>
to my heart Now and forever And our love had its start Not long ago We were gathering stars While a million guitars Played our love song When you said I love you Every beat of my heart said it too Was a moment like this Do you remember And your eyes threw a kiss When they met mine Now we own all the stars And a million guitars are still playing Darling, you are the song, and you'll always belong to my heart. I want you to meet Mr. Danny Kaye, the movie star. Mr. Kaye, this is Miss McQueen, president of the Danny Kaye Fan Club of America. Limited. <laughs> Limited? Yes, to one member. You see, Mr. Kaye, Miss McQueen's having trouble getting members to join my fan club. I uh, can well understand that. <laughs> oh, is that so? Well, your fan club is no bigger than mine. Excuse me, Mr. Kaye, who are you talking to? I'm talking to my split personality. My, the things they can split in this atomic age. I needed a guest star, so I decided to split my personality. Are you going to keep it a secret or share it with the world? Well, we'll just keep it between the three of us. Oh, the big three. Yeah. You uh, still don't get it, do you, Miss McQueen? Look, very simply, there are two Danny K's on tonight's program. All right, if you say so. But it's going to make my way for the fan club twice as difficult. Haven't you gotten any new members at all? I just got another girl to join. Oh, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> How'd you get her? See where you got your guest star. Oh, yeah. Now, <laughs> oh, you split your personality, too, huh? Yes. Do you think these hats look good on us? Well, we need more members than just your split personality, you know. I know, but you need more publicity, Mr. K. Look at Lena Turner. Yes. Look at look at Frank Sinatra. Look at Bing Crosby. Look at Dick Haynes. I can't. I'm still looking at Lena Turner. Maybe I can get your split personality to join the club. Oh, no, no. I don't think we could do that. He, uh, he couldn't actually join. You see, he's uh, just a sublimated libido. Oh, but we're not at war with them anymore. Miss <laughs> McQueen, you'll have to excuse me now. I've got to go take my guest star to see my two writers, Al and Joe. <laughs> Come on, Mr. K. You mean to tell me that somebody actually writes this radio program? Well, certainly you don't think I just go out and pick my jokes off trees, do you? Well, I thought perhaps you just husk them off stalks. <laughs> A very corny crack, Mr. K. Come on in to meet my two writers now, huh? They don't talk to me because I won't use a joke they've been trying to get me to do all season. A joke about my sister marrying an Irishman and somebody says, oh, really? And I say, no, O'Reilly. You know? <laughs> well, here's their room. I... Hey, wait a minute. I don't hear the typewriter. Hey, fellas, what's going on here? Who are you picketing? Danny K is unfair to our joke. Danny, Danny K is Now, wait, unfair. wait. This must be the steel strike. These guys have been stealing jokes from everybody. <laughs> Look, fellas, I know you don't talk to me, but I want you to speak to my split personality guest star, Mr. Danny K. of Hollywood. 
Well, say something, fellas. All Danny K's are unfair to our joke. Now, All you don't Dan- understand, fellas. This, this fellow here that I'm talking about is my split personality. You know what he means, Joe. This fellow is his alter ego. Is he kidding? Nothing's going to alter his ego. <laughs> now, look, fellas, you always talk to my guest, Don, and I insist you talk to Mr. K of Hollywood. Well, looks like he tricked us into it, Joe. We'll have to talk to the guest. Hello, Hello Mr. K of Hollywood. Hollywood. Greetings. Hey, uh, Mr. K, uh, maybe you'd be interested in a great joke, you know. You mean the one about my sister married an Irishman and somebody says, oh, really? And I say, no, McGee. (laughs) It ain't McGee, funny. (laughs) Well, I won't do that joke. I want you fellas to just... All right, are you okay? Can I see you a minute, John? Why, no, what are you doing? You can't interrupt this program like that. Go back and sit with your wife. This is about Mary Margaret. You see, Kay, we don't get along any too well anyhow. And she blames me for making her sit through this. So if you don't stop with that guest star routine, she's going to walk out of here and she says, if I don't leave with her, I don't never have to come home. Well, I'm not going to stop. And a boy, chum, you stick to that. <laughs> Oh, oh, you here too? If my husband don't come home with me now, I'm going to hold you personally responsible. Hold me responsible? Yeah, you. I'll sue you. Sue me for what? You sue what I can see you for. (laughs) Now, wait just a minute. Don't you lower your voice to me. (laughs) I'll take this to the highest goodwill court in the land. Now, just a minute. If it's a goodwill court you want, I can settle any quarrel between you and your husband myself. Now, wait a minute, Dick K. Don't tell me you've got a John J. Anthony personality, too. Of course. My personality has many facets. Yeah, all drips have facets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's pretty good, Mary Margaret. Ah, close your face. <laughs> now, would you leave it to me, fellas, please, ladies, gentlemen, hey, leave it to me, will you? I'll solve your problem. Only the other day, I straightened out a fellow who had a terrific problem. He was at that in-between age. What do you mean, in-between age? He was too old for Castoria and too young for Seratan. <laughs> Come into my courtroom, folks. Dave Terry, how about a little music to get these people into a more peaceful mood? Right this way, folks. We'll open court right after this number. Okay, Dick Joe, will you set the scene for the next case? Mr. K, this is the case of A.L. and his wife, M. Just a minute. No initials, please. (laughs) I want names, dates, places, rumors, gossip. I want all the dirt you can think of. (laughs) I'm nosy. (laughs) All right, you two, step up to the microphone. Now, uh, what is your problem? Uh, Mr. K, my marriage is a failure. Tut, tut, my good man. Your marriage is not a failure till you've spoken to me. (laughs) 
Yeah, well, our trouble started on our wedding day. What happened? We got married. <laughs> I see. And is this lady, uh, this lady you married? That's what's left of her. <laughs> Madam, what is your problem? Uh, well, Mr. K, my husband is a good man. That is the wrong attitude on this program. <laughs> How dare you say your husband is good? Well, he was when we first got married. He was a good husband. Day in and nights out. <laughs> Uh, go on. Well, my husband always said a woman's place is in the home. Well, what's wrong with that? You should see some of the women he brought into my home. <laughs> my father warned me about marrying him. Is this your father? Yes, I am. I'm Mr. Pennyfeather. Well, Mr. Pennyfeather, what's your problem? I have a wife. What about your wife? Well, she encourages our 19-year-old son to take out girls. Well, what's wrong with encouraging him to take out girls? The same ones I do. <laughs> Is this your son, Mr. Pennyfeather? Yeah, I'm Harold Pennyfeather. What's, uh, what's your problem, Harold? If A can do a piece of work in three days and B can do the same work in four days, how long will it no, take? Oh, you go to school, Harold. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, is this your teacher? What is your name, madam? My name is Mary Hunter, and my problem is Harold Pennyfeather. I, I have to keep him after school every day. Why is that? I caught him smoking a cigarette. Oh, really? No, a Raleigh. <laughs> Right here, Parker. Right here. Not a school teacher, too. Hey, Chum, how about me and Mary Margaret? One problem at a time. I'll get to you. Uh, you forgot about us. We started this. Quiet. Place. Now, what were you saying, Miss Hannah? Well, on account of keeping Harold after school, my boyfriend, Bill Zucker, broke our engagement and is now growing with a girl named Ann Teeman. I see. Is this your boyfriend, Bill Zucker? No, I'm Ann Teeman. Oh, what's your problem, Miss Teeman? Well, when I started going with Bill, he had just broken his engagement to Ruth Gilbert. Are you Ruth Gilbert? Oh, yes, I am. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? Miss Gilbert, do you know Miss Teeman? How, How do you do? do? And uh, this is Harold's teacher, Miss Hunter, Miss Gilbert, Miss Teeman. How do you do? <laughs> Harold Pennyfeather, Miss Hunter, Miss Teeman, and Miss Gilbert. Oh, How do you do? do? And this is Mr. Pennyfeather, the father of Harold Pennyfeather. Miss Hunter is teacher, Miss Teeman the girl who took Miss Hunter's boyfriend away, and Miss Gilbert, who broke her engagement to Miss Hunter's ex-boyfriend, Bill Zucker. Hi, Hi, you. You. Hey, Kay, how about me and Mary Margaret? Oh, you two must know each other, I'm sure. <laughs> now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, Miss Gilbert. Uh, is this Bill Zucker who broke his engagement to you? Uh, yes, I am, and this is my wife, Mrs. Zucker. Your wife? Bill, how could you do this to me? Oh, I feel faint. Get me a doctor. I have a doctor in the balcony, lady. <laughs> What's your name, doctor? Dr. George Davis. Dr. Davis, meet Bill Zuckert, Ruth Gilbert, Ann Teeman, Mary Hunter, Harry Pellefetta, and Miss Penny Senior. Oh, how do you do? Uh, Mr. K, I am the father of 18 children. Uh, what is your problem, doctor? <laughs> My wife wants to adopt a baby. <laughs> you object to that? Yes, it's noisy enough around my house. If it isn't the kids, it's the cuddle next door. Always arguing about your program, and they wind up in an all-night brawl. I see. Is this the couple? Yeah, that's us, chum. Me and Mary Margaret. <laughs> you see, I told you I'd get back to you. The solution to your problem is very simple. If you two will stop arguing about my program, it won't be so noisy around the doctor's house, and he'll let his wife adopt the baby. That'll give him a peace of mind so he'll be able to take care of Ruth Gilbert when she faints. But Miss Gilbert won't have to faint if Bill Zuckert will divorce his wife and go back to Mary Hunter, who won't have to keep Harold after school, and Harold will be so busy with his problems that he won't have time to steal his father's girl, so Mr. Pennyfeather will be so busy he won't have time to interfere with your marriage. And that is my advice to you. <laughs> ah, you're talking through your hat, Kat. Hat, did you say? Don't ever use the word hat to me. You people think you have problems? Well, let me tell you about my problem. It all began when I was born a month too soon. My ma was frightened by a runaway saloon. Pa was forced to be a hobo because he played the oboe. And the oboe, it is clearly understood, is an ill wind that no one blows good. 
I'll never forget the morning that Grandpa ate the awning to impress a pretty lady who went for men that were shady. Then Uncle Josiah lit the great Frisco fire, ran off to Hawaii with the old Leary cow. Which his loving wife resented and thereupon invented a rolling pin that strikes and then says, Pow! And I am the result of the twisted eugenics of this family of inbred schizophrenics, the end of a long, long line of bats. I design women's hats. I'm Anatole Lafayette, I shriek with chic. My hat of the week cause six divorces, three runaway horses. I'm Anatole Lafayette, my small frou-frous make heady news from Fifth Avenue casements to all back basements. Let me get my paw on a little piece of straw and voila! A chapeau at 60 bucks a throw. <laughs> It's a how I pull and you want to do things I do. I do. <laughs> like placing yards of lacing or a bicycle built for two on it. I'm Anatole of Paris. I must design. I'm just like wine. I go to your head. Give me thread and a needle. I itch, I twitch to stitch. I'm a glutton for cotton, for putting with a button to snip a plug, nip and tug, fix and trim, crown and brim, tote that fudge, lift that veil. <laughs> and why do I sew each new chapeau with a style that must look positively grimy? Strictly between us. Entre nous, I hate women. <laughs> this is the Armed Forces Radio Service.